the Central University of Kerala was established as part of the newly created 15 Central Universities by a new act passed by the Parliament in early 2009. The reason for choosing Kasarkot region as the headquarters for Central University of Kerala is very clear. Among the 14 districts of Kerala, Kasarkot lies in the northern part of the state. It is one of the backward districts in the state, especially in terms of education, health and infrastructure. So the central government uh, identified Kasargod as the best place to start with and also sufficient landed area are also available in Kasargod. The government of Kerala has given us altogether 360 acres in Kasargod. The starting of the new university in Kasargod is to uplift the standards of living of the people, particularly by giving them proper education at the higher education level. When the university started, it had hardly 17 students in the first year 2009-10. As of now, we have more than 750 students and 7 schools and 17 departments. The 7 schools are the School of Global Studies, the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, School of Languages and Comparative Literature, School of Professional Studies, School of Biological Sciences, School of Energy, Environment and Earth Sciences, and School of Mathematical and Physical Sciences. So altogether as of now we have 17 departments and 7 schools, but in future the number will naturally grow. As I meet the ordinary people, as I meet the civil society in Kasargod, Kannur and other northern parts of Kerala, they look it up with Central University of Kerala with great expectations. They call it this a dream of the people in the, in the districts, North Malabar, to have a central university and this is the only central university of the state. And they also request all of us to start a, an exclusive medical college because this is an area where uh, the pro uh, problems of community medicine is at the maximum. For instance, this is an endosulfan affected area. So during the last convocation, Honorable Visitor, the Pre Honorable President of India uh, requested us to see whether we can start a school of community medicine and public health. So maybe before starting medical college, we will start with a master's program in public health and that will be the roadmap towards starting a medical college in future. A couple of months ago, exactly five and a half months ago, I could see that lot of responsibilities are lying on my part. A lot of challenges, a lot of problems and issues. In a way, except the land that we received, we do not have much infrastructure in terms of independent infrastructure. We hardly have few couple of unifloor buildings in the Peria campus, as you could see it. But uh, in all other places, they are all rented buildings. For instance, in the town, there is a Vidyanagar, there is a campus uh, which is called the Vidyanagar campus. That is completely rented building and uh, four departments and the university library are working there. And come to the science campus in Padanakkar, uh, it has all, most of the science department but it is also a rented building. So what we have in Peria campus is the only thing which we can say that it is of our own. This university has to become a world class university but we need to take up lot of responsibilities to gear up in this line. We have to start from the scratch, provide the infrastructure, attract the teaching faculty, the best teaching faculty because as of now almost 60% of the teaching positions are vacant. I am going to fill it up them very soon and also construct the infrastructure. So with the right students, with the right teachers and the right infrastructure, I think the situation can significantly improve. The structure of the university, we do have vice chancellor followed by the registrar, the finance officer, the controller of examination and then the dean of students welfare and other deans attached to every school. We do also have uh, the senate which is called the court, the finance council, finance committee, the executive council, the academic council, a students council. The students are elected and uh, uh, it is headed by a chairman and uh, he is advised by the dean of the students.
So, as you know that Sir is, uh, sir is a well-known political scientist and is an analyst, political analyst, socio-political analyst. He is, uh, is retired from uh, University of Kerala and uh, joined here in the month of August 2014. Uh, so after joining the, uh, the present Vice Chancellor, in fact, we plan to start more departments, new areas we want to open. Uh, we started our construction works. Two hostels are coming up. The foundation work is already over. Um, and we have awarded eight more works to rights. So we are hopeful that in a year's time, uh, there will be a lot of buildings here. But maybe in one and a half years time, we will move to the permanent buildings. There are seven schools under which there are 16 departments. And in the 16 departments, we are offering 27 academic programs which includes 16 PG programs, 10 research program and one integrated BA MA program. Uh, we have already completed the first convocation. Honorable Visitor and Honorable President uh, Pranam Mukherjee ji came and uh, inaugurated uh, the convocation, delivered the convocation address and it attracted the attention of the whole state. It was participated by the Chief Minister, other Ministers, the Governor, all of them came and also the huge public gathering and which explains the public expectations and dreams about the transformation of this University. We have finalized the master plan of this University with the help of our consultant Team One India Private Limited Hyderabad. With CPWD as our project management consultant, we have completed the construction of 7 kilometers of compound wall Unifloor buildings of teaching block 1, teaching block 2, utility block, 2 blocks of ladies hostel, surrounding roads and 24 numbers of transit quarters. We have shifted 5 te teaching departments, uh, administration department and mini library to our Tejasini Hill campus and at the same time we have accommodated our employees also in the transit quarters. CPW has started the construction of two permanent hostels for boys and girls to accommodate 214 each. We have finalized the uh, plan of 15 academic department buildings, administration and a multi-purpose hall. Ordinary people would look up this university with uh, huge expectation. They would say, uh, whenever I go for public meetings, the one question that I, I cannot miss from the public is that, when can we expect the beginning of a medical college? Because that is in dire need of this area, because um, in Northern Kerala, health is a big problem and proper medical colleges are not available. There is no medical college in the district and most of the time the local people has to rush to Mangalore to get their health care service better. But with the beginning of this university, I am sure more changes will come and in the decades to come, in the coming years, I am quite sure the situation of Kasargod district and North Kerala will change and ultimately an educational breakthrough and a infrastructural development will take place in Kasargo district. The School of Biological Sciences starting in this Riverside Transit Campus during the year 2010. The primary objective of the school is to promote higher education and research, to equip the students with the skills in the basic and applied aspects of biological sciences. At present, four departments are functioning under this school. Department of Animal Science, Genomic Science, Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, and Department of Plant Science. Our course curriculum is very up-to-date and designed by accommodating the most modern developments in the subject and also with an interdisciplinary approach. We, the uh, young faculty members, were leading the department and uh, building a very good profile for the department by organizing a lot of international seminars and workshops and symposiums and so on. We are all motivated by the uh, present Vice Chancellor, Professor Gopakumar, who is a visionary in every sense. Uh, I'm sure that being a political scientist, he has a far-ranging 
uh, kind of uh, knowledge in his subject and he has a very good perspective about the university which he has demonstrated so far in this short period of his tenure. The Central University of Kerala has taken steps to strengthen the teacher education programs in the university. This is done with a view to improve the quality of higher education in India. The department is intending to bring the, the three aspects that is the assess, the equity and the quality in higher education through its uh, um, a number of programs in the, uh, from this department. The School of Languages has got three departments in it, Department of Comparative Literature, Department of Linguistics and Department of Hindi. Our new Vice Chancellor, Professor G. Gopagumar, a well-known cephologist, and a political scientist has taken over the balancing act of the university. Now his job mainly is to consolidate whatever the university has gained and take it forward, especially as the first vice chancellor to be in the new campus. The university from now on will go through a building process. objective on the vision of this library is to cater the needs of uh, academic needs of uh, uh, university of uh, central university of kerala uh, we have accessioned around 23000 uh, books approximately uh, including the transit campus libraries in this center our main motto is to uh, provide maximum benefit to the students by uh, providing the online resources and the services as well as the hard copies of the documents made available to the students, faculty and the research scholars of this Central University of Kerala. The Department of International Relations started in 2012. It is one of the biggest department of the Central University of Kerala offering courses of a BA, MA, MPhil and PhD. In addition to the regular courses, the Department of International Relations is having four centers. The plan was each center had to be assisted by external funding agencies. As per this, the Center for WTO Studies got assistance from the Spices Board of India in 2013. As part of the UGC Innovative Program, the Department of International Relations launched its integrated BAMA course at the Capital Centre Trandrum in 2014. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the buildings, uh, it is the first thing, the infrastructure is the first primary thing that is to be there for establishing everything. So, uh, to move to the new campus, it is our dream and now the buildings works are started and I think things are going in tremendous pace so that our dreams also can uh, go in that pace. The Dean of Students Welfare has the responsibility of coordinating all extra classroom activities of the students of this university. As such, we have basically different uh, uh, domains of activities like the life of students in the campus that is uh, about the hostels then about the sports cultural activities of students and uh, various coordinating the facility or facilitating various scholarships that are available to students uh, I've been here for almost two years one year and a half and I have to say that being that long in this university somehow it's a really great experience in the sense that this university maybe is in the f uh, in the beginning in the first stage only five years old 
one person I think is admirable here is our Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Dr. G. Gobakumar. He is a not only a respected person, uh, but only he is a very knowledgeable person. He is a so social scientist, uh, researcher, and also a teacher. And I really like when there are some programs from this university, his speeches. His delivering speeches, they are very, I will not say only great, but very powerful on knowledge. After getting a very famous, a prominent social scientist as a vice chancellor, uh, we believe that you know this place can actually this university can contribute a lot of things to the uh, this particular area and uh, in a way we can create a different culture which will be useful for the people outside or even uh, the students coming from the lo uh, local areas. Um, so we believe that this is a wonderful opportunity for the people around Kasaragod and for the students who are coming from a different kind of uh, different parts of India to you know uh, know the place and. Uh, document the culture here, document the language here. The aim of Central University of Kerala is to provide higher education with a holistic approach so that ultimately we can nurture wisdom. In many of the developed countries, uh, universities have reduced or limited itself to become the producers of knowledge. Knowledge production is very important in the 21st century, in the age of globalization. But mere knowledge production is not sufficient. Only when knowledge graduates to wisdom, matures to wisdom, it benefits the society in general. So we need to bring in scientific advancement, technological advancement, cultural advancement, and at the same time promote the values of our society. So by integrating the values of India, the values of education, along with that the growth of science and technology, literature, architecture, social sciences, philosophy, languages, I am sure ultimately the very landscape of the society can be changed. So by bringing wisdom to the society, along with the production of knowledge, the Central University of Kerala is committed to serve the humanity in general and Kerala and Kasaragod region in particular.